Hey there, welcome to this Yoga for Squash, Yoga for Badminton video. My name is Collie. I uh, hope you're doing really well today. Thank you for joining. We're going to be doing a short class that's going to focus on a few different things that will hopefully keep your body in good shape so you can come back to the court in a, in a good place. Um, we're going to particularly focus on the forearms and the wrists. We're going to think about stretching out the muscles in the legs um, and also loosen out the shoulders, a bit of the upper body stuff too. It's going to be short and sweet, hopefully something that you can do maybe once a week, once every couple of weeks, just to keep your body in a good place, keep it strong, keep it flexible so you can come back to the game. Uh, and keep performing and staying injury free. Um, definitely open for beginners. We're going to be doing stuff only on a mat, so all you need is a yoga mat. Um, make yourselves comfortable in a seated position. That's where we're going to begin. Let's roll on with it. So we're going to start in a in a seated position. I recommend crossing your legs. If that is super uncomfortable, just take the legs out in front of you. Just take a seat wherever feels good. And before we get moving. Go ahead and take a few deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Make them long, make them satisfying, and just use them as a bit of a transition to it, into the class, just to settle into your seated position. And feel free to close your eyes or keep them open, whatever feels good for you. And we'll take 30 seconds, maybe a minute or so, just to slow the body, slow the mind down. And take your time here just to kind of take a step back from whatever you're doing previously, making sure that your attention, your focus is directing in towards your body. So just have a little moment to scan through, notice how you're doing today, physically, mentally. And then perhaps take your attention to the breath. And let's start to follow the breath as it comes in and out. Try not to force it too much, but just allowing yourself some time to enjoy, like noticing how your breathing is doing at the moment. If you feel that you're breathing kind of quick or shallow, just make sure you take it a little bit deeper with the next inhale, and then a little bit longer with the next exhale. And we'll come into a rhythm here where the breath is soft, slow, and our focus is directed into it. We'll try and keep it that way throughout the class if we can. And in your own time, you can feel free to stay here a little bit longer. Otherwise, just gently blink open your eyes. Um, we'll make our way towards our all fours. We're going to come onto our hands and our knees. And we'll take just a few cat cow poses here to loosen out the spine. So you can soften your belly down towards the mat. Take the gaze forwards as you open your chest. And then draw your chin back in towards your chest as you round your back. So a few more times, try and move with the breath. Inhale, open out, feel the back arch. And then exhale, chin back in, feel the back round. A couple more times. No rushing at all. Feel free to close the eyes. Nice one just to pay attention to how everything feels. I'm trying to make space in between the shoulder blades in your cat pose. And then really feel the back arch, bum in the air, collarbones broad in your cow. One more time. Before lowering your bum onto your heels, let's take a seat here. We're going to target the shoulders straight away uh, by interlocking fingers behind us. We're going to forward fold, allow your chest to smother your thighs. Ultimately, forehead on the mat, arms and hands up and over the head. Rabbit pose. So you can kind of take it however you want to take it, as far as you want to go. Try and find a, 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 sweet spot, a sweet spot, whereby it's relatively challenging, but not pushing it too far. You can feel the muscles around the shoulders start to kind of stretch out a little bit. Don't forget to breathe. And then as you come out, let's shake out the hands. And we'll get some blood flow going to the fingertips. I know the wrists and the hands and the forearms are really important during your squash and badminton games, so you want to really give them some TLC perhaps once or twice a week, definitely before you play as well. Interlock fingers, trace the figure of eight with the, with the fists. And then taking it back onto the mat, let's take the hands down and point the fingers out towards the sides. You can just gently rock from side to side, weight of the body goes into one hand, take it across to the other, uh, and so forth. 
maybe you want to point the fingers in towards each other and then maybe you can go a little bit deeper and point the fingers back in towards the body start to feel it in the forearms here you can rock forwards and backwards particularly before yoga but also particularly before your game of choice of the two it's worth just getting them ready get them warmed up shake it out if that feels good and then without further ado let's take it towards our downward facing dog so we're going to take the toes onto the mat you want to lift the knees off the ground suck in your tummy as you raise your hips allow your head to feel nice and heavy and straight off the bat here I want you to pedal the feet out so one knee bends quite a lot the other leg straightens and then bend the other knee and straighten the other leg so we're kind of bringing a bit of heat into the muscles on the backs of the legs Imagine you're wagging the tail of your dog, so the bum and the hips can sweep from side to side. Not only is that bringing heat into the muscles, just kind of easing into your downward dog, finding your place in it. And without further ado, we're going to walk towards the front of the mat. We'll come to the front and find a standing forward fold. So keep the hands down, bend your knees quite a lot to help that and drop the head. I know it's difficult to look up, to not look up because you want to look at the screen. But try and drop the crown of the head down and then interlock your fingers behind the back. And again we'll target the shoulders here, you can sweep the arms up and over. Staying here, maybe shaking from side to side, shake out the head, give it a swing. You can start to straighten one leg perhaps, bend the other knee and then change sides. Have a little kind of glide between those two, just tapping into the hamstrings. And then in your own time, we're going to drop the hands down to the ground and step back to our plank. And from your plank pose, you really want the shoulders to be above the wrists, fingers to be very wide, pushing quite hard with the hands so the back is domed. So immediately a bit of core strength, you want to squeeze the glutes as well. Look slightly forwards. Drop the knees, relax the tops of your feet on the mat, and then lower your chest and your chin all the way down. And let's find a cobra. So we're pressed with the hands down on the ground as we lift our chest, slight bend in the back. Take your time here, enjoy it. Notice how it feels. Maybe you want to look left, look right. Could roll the shoulders out. And then in your own time, push back to your child's pose, so bum on heels. Extend your arms, find that space in your back as you lower your head. You can close your eyes here and take a nice deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Before lifting yourself up to your all fours. And we'll tuck the toes again, lift the knees, downward facing dog. Taking similar moves, so we're going to walk towards the, the front of the mat again. This time I want you to uncurl your body to a standing pose, take your time, have a softness in the knees, find strength in your feet, and as you stand up tall I want you to lift the arms above the head, open your chest fully as you reach high, and we'll grab the right wrist with the left, finger to, with the left fingers, we're going to enjoy a little side bend here to get into the, into the side of the upper body, so you can lean over to the left, try and keep the hips stacked on top of the knees on top of the ankles, and then come back up, change grip and then lean over to the right. Now as you come out of it, let's bring our hands to our heart center and we're gonna step all the way to the back of the mat with the left foot. So the right foot stays at the front. You wanna bend the right knee so the knee's above the ankle. You can sweep your arms wide into your warrior two. So good one to go deep into the hips here. Quadriceps with the right leg kinda of engaging. Left leg getting a decent stretch. Chest open. And as we look over the right hand, relax your shoulders, flip the right palm, lean forwards and then reverse your warrior. So left hand, left thigh, and then right arm up towards the ceiling. And again, just finding some nice space here, intercostal muscles, stretching out. You might find that get quite tight from swinging the racket around a lot. Look up towards your right hand and breathe. And when you're ready, take it down towards the ground with our arms. So we're going to cartwheel them down and then step back to our plank. Drop knees, relax the tops of your feet, lower chest and chin, and then find your cobra. Again, bending the back. You wanna squeeze the glutes as you come into this kind of back bend, and then push back, child's pose. Tuck toes, lift knees, downward facing dog. Same thing, come to the front, stepping slowly, mindfully. Let's take a gentle uncurl, all the way, standing pose. Lift the chest, open it out. 
Lift the arms. This time, bring your hands to heart center. And then relax the hands on the lower back, fingers on the bum. We're going to find a standing back bend, so you can take a little spring in the knees, push the hips forwards, start to open out your chest fully as you look towards the front of the room or look towards the ceiling. <clears throat> now I recommend staying here for a little bit. It's a really great pose to counteract any slouching that you might be doing, uh, not only on the core but on the at your desk, perhaps of your computer, your phone, your food, your bike. Come into a standing back bend a couple of times a day, really kind of counteracts that. When you're ready, come back up, hands to heart. We'll take the right foot this time all the way to the back of the mat. So we want the left foot to continue to point forwards. We want the heel to be in line with the arch of the right foot. Again, notice left knee go deep into it. So the knee nudges towards little toe. Arms go wide, symmetrical. You may even want to look at your arms, make sure the, the one at the back isn't kind of lower down than the other. Tendency for that to happen. Let's look over the left hand, we'll flip the palm and reverse it on this side. As you reverse your warrior, you may find that the left leg straightens quite a lot here. Try and keep the deep lunge in the knee and then lift the left hand a little bit higher to exaggerate, to get a little bit more purchase. Torso high and then breath soft. When you're ready, cut with your arms down. Make sure your fingers are wide as they touch the mat and step back to your plank. Now we're gonna bring a bit of core action into it from here, a bit of core strength and a bit of forearm strength. So lower yourself down onto the forearms, forearm plank. Fingers very wide, palms touching the ground. We kind of want our forearms to be parallel. Notice the heels of your feet, kick them to the back of the room, lower the bum and the hips. Push with the forearms so your back is domed. And we'll look slightly forwards. See if you can stay a little bit longer. Test yourself. And then come back onto your hands whenever you're ready. We'll take a vinyasa by dropping the knees, relaxing the tops of the feet, lowering your chest and your chin all the way down. Breathe into your cobra. So we're pressing not only the hands, but also the feet down as we lift the chest. And then you can head back to your child's pose where we'll take um, a moment here, you can soften the eyelids. Just a moment to relax the shoulders. Before coming back up to your all fours. Um, and we're going to thread the needle here, again targeting the shoulders. You can lift the left arm up towards the ceiling. We're going to slide the left hand underneath the right arm. You can take the left shoulder onto the mat. Now as the left shoulder goes down, relax the left side of your face onto the ground as well. And perhaps take the right arm towards the front right corner of your mat. I recommend just staying here, focusing on the opening, the stretch in the left shoulder. Breathe there. And then come out of it slowly. So you can press with the right hand to lift yourself back up. Breathe in to lift the right arm, take it high and then slide it through underneath the left arm. So right shoulder goes down, you can relax the right side of the face on the mat, and then maybe left arm goes forwards. We'll stay here, a few breaths, before lifting back up. And then one last little move here, we're gonna find a puppy pose, great one to open out the chest, find some space uh, in the upper body. You can keep the bum directly on top of your knees, give your hands uh, a little bit of a walk out in front of you, and then lower your chest down to the ground, maybe chin to mat, look forwards, or if that is inaccessible, relax the crown or the forehead down onto the ground. So whichever feels good for you, Really good opening in the chest here, a little bit of a bend in the back. And in fact, if you wanted to stretch out your triceps, I always really enjoy bringing the palms together here. You can bend the elbows, sliding the hands above the head. And you'll feel a really decent stretch on the muscles on the underside of your upper arm. We'll come out of it slowly and come back up to our all fours. In your own time, we're gonna take it towards a seated position. I recommend placing the toes on the ground, lifting the knees off the, off the mat, and then stepping or jumping through. 
we'll cross our legs we'll take a seat and then extend our legs out in front of us give them a little shake out before targeting uh, lots of things on the back side of the body so calves hamstrings and the muscles in the back by forward folding let's lift up the arms above the head as we inhale bend your knees quite a lot with the exhale fold over your thighs imagine you're kind of hugging your thighs with your chest grab the shins grab your feet look over your toes so we're finding space in the spine here as we lengthen the back try and relax your shoulders and then maybe once you're like as far forwards as you can looking over toes rather than at knees then you can play around with straightening legs one at a time or maybe both at the both at the same time but don't force it it's quite a challenging position don't forget to breathe and then in your own time extend your arms out in front of you and we'll hover down onto our back slowly just letting the crown or the back of the head here land softly and straight away let's take the right knee we're going to bend it place the right foot on the mat we're going to find a reclining pigeon left foot right thigh figure of four shape with your legs you want to flex your left foot here and we'll thread the left hand in the gap between the legs interlock your fingers around your right shin or around your right thigh whatever you can get really and just gently draw the knee towards your face so here you should start to really feel a decent stretch in the left glutes here. If you want to get a little bit more purchase with that, I recommend pushing your left knee forwards, either with the knee itself, or you could even just use your left hand and gently nudge it away. Should be a pretty good one just to really get some a decent stretch on the glutes. Run and stretch it's also called, but today we'll call it racket player stretch. And then in your own time we'll straighten out the right leg, take it down to the ground, keep the left knee where it is, grab it with the uh, right hand, sweep your left arm out to the left and we'll enjoy a supine twist by taking the knee over to the right with the right hand. Now if your left shoulder has gone over with the knee, come back up with the knee. Park the shoulder on the ground first, make sure it's firmly rooted on the mat and then take the knee just as far as it will go. Don't force it. Again, looking for that sweet spot where you're challenging yourself but not pushing it too far. And then perhaps look at your left hand to increase the twist. Stay here for three or four breaths. Try and keep the focus, not letting the mind wander off elsewhere. And then we'll come back onto the back and lift the left leg to the ceiling. Grab your thigh or your calf with both of your hands. And let's draw the leg in towards the face. Maybe the head comes up off the ground, hamstrings, getting a little look in here, point toes down towards your face. And then very slowly, lower the leg with control. Try not just to slam the leg down. And take a moment here, just let the left leg kind of settle a little bit before bending the knee of that leg. And we'll find our uh, racket players stretch, runners, uh, runners stretch, reclining pigeon, it's also called, uh, from here. So right foot, left thigh, right hand will be doing the threading in between the gap. Then you can interlock your fingers wherever is accessible. If you're bringing your head up, try to relax the shoulders, try to relax the face. And maybe you're kind of drawing the left knee a little bit closer in towards your face each time you exhale. So maybe breathe in to prepare. And then as you exhale, you're kind of hugging it in a little bit. Again, notice right knee, you can nudge it forwards. And then come out of it with control. Straighten out your left leg. Grab your right knee with your left hand. And then swipe your, sweep your right arm. No swiping here. <laughs> sweep your right arm out to the right. So you can feel your chest very broad and open here. Notice your straight leg, so the left leg on this side. Really kick the heel away from you. And then shuffle the head in the opposite direction. So your neck and your leg are both long. And they're encouraging length in spine as you twist. Looking to right hand will also help. And then just staying here for at least three or four breaths. 
See if you can focus on the full breathing cycle to lock your attention in. Each time the breath leaves the body, perhaps you can release a little bit of physical tension, maybe in the glutes here or the belly, the twist of the core. Before returning to your back, and we'll straighten the right leg, kick your heel away to straighten it, grab thigh, maybe calf, and we'll draw the head up towards the right leg. Think of it internally rotating your thighs here rather than opening them out. Don't forget to breathe as well. Tendency to kind of stop breathing in a couple of poses like this. Enjoy it and then slowly lower the leg with control. And then just taking any last little movements here. We'll bring the knees to the chest. Could uh, wrap your arms around the legs and squeeze everything in place. Could take the knees with the hands and draw some little circles with the knees or the legs just to loosen out the hips. Maybe try both directions. Maybe even happy baby if you are up for it. Feet going high, hands on the back of the knees, just gently drawing thighs down towards ribs. Good one to get into the groin, inner thighs. Maybe if you are able to grab the insides of your feet, but don't force it. Try not to allow your lower back to sweep up off the ground quite a lot. Be careful with your back. You're gonna get just as much purchase by hands on back of the knees and driving your thighs towards the ribs. But um, have a little rock, have a roll, massage the back out. Might feel pretty good on the muscles along your spine. Maybe even grabbing big toes and straightening out your legs one at a time or both at the same time. And then when you're ready, we'll come on down and enjoy a little bit of a breather. You can maybe take one last little squeeze, curling into a little ball, forehead to knees, knees to forehead. And then go ahead and sprawl your legs out. Starfish them out. Starfish your arms out. Any little fidgets, get them out of the way. Shoulders, hands, jaw, eyeballs, toes. And then find some stillness, relaxing the back of your head. Taking a deep breath in through the nose, let it out through the mouth, make it audible, make it satisfying and close the eyes. Just take a moment to enjoy this stillness here. Quite possibly the only time today when you're able to uh, keep the body still, relax. And then also try and channel a similar stillness in the mind as well. So you've got the rest of the day to let your, your mind or your head kind of run away with thoughts, ideas, worries, but for now, literally just 30 seconds or so of resting in that space behind thoughts And if the mind does get busy, you've always got uh, the breath. You can sharpen up your focus by following the entire breathing cycle. Pay particularly close attention to it. Maybe lengthen the inhale and the exhale. And you can bring gentle movements into fingers and toes, arms above the head, full body stretch. And we'll take it over to one side you can roll to one side of the mat and then lift up to your seated position where we began take your time getting there and once you are returned to your seated position take a moment just to give your shoulders a little bit of a roll maybe move some in the head and the neck and gently close your eyes taking your time here not rushing off and just noticing how you feel after that little bit of movement. Hopefully good. <laughs> Physically, mentally, just having that little check-in. Um, before closing your practice, you can bring the hands to heart. Gently bow to close. Seal it off. Namaste. Nice one. Thank you so much for joining. 
Uh, if you have any questions about any of that movement, please feel free to get in touch. As I said earlier, hopefully you should be good just to do it, little and often, uh, just to keep your body in a good place so you can return to the court uh, stronger, maybe more flexible. Um, stay tuned for more yoga for squash, yoga for badminton videos. Do have a look on my website. There's loads of stuff up there that might be of benefit to you. Um, please do pass this vid on to anyone else that might feel that you might feel would benefit from it. Um, take it very easy, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day. Hope you have a good one and hope to see you soon. Bye for now.